That was Michelle. I have to. <laughs> I have to set up their house tomorrow. Wait for the refrigerator repair man. Oh, geez. <laughs> I just started recording, so I won't forget. Okay. Hi, Jeff and Jill. Hello. Has Hello. anybody heard? Has Hello. anybody heard from Sherry today? I meant to call her and I didn't. I thought Michelle told me that she came home from the hospital today. Yeah. But I'm not sure anything else. Is And Sunny is at the Meadows. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I meant to call her and said. didn't get to it. Sat here like a good boy. Girl. <laughs> girl you're my little baby oh oh this Hello. is my chloe hi chloe this is my spoiled rotten little girl oh. <laughs> yes i know she's a kisser at least <laughs> she's not trying to stick her nose up inside your her stick her tongue inside your nose which is no. what my daughter's dogs do oh no she better not and boy oh boy they get right up in there. <laughs> Clean you right out. <laughs> My last one was never a kisser, and this one, constant. Right, so. you mommy's baby? Good hmm. company. Sweet. Yep. Michelle is going to join you. us, right? Yeah, she's just getting ready to go downstairs when she called me to tell me what time they were coming tomorrow. Okay, so we'll just we'll wait another minute. Yeah, she should be right here. And would somebody find Psalm one thirty four? I'm going to use. I oh. this is my uh, daily devotional disciplines. Hey Sherry, how are you? And they have a an uh, evening prayer. Kathy. Um, like... I have Sherry on the phone. Oh, I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you on speaker. We're on the Bible study. Everybody's asking. So it's oh, good. thank you, Jeff. Hi, Sherry. Hello. She had physical therapy twice today, and she has to go tomorrow. Oh, wow. And then some more tomorrow. Yeah, so I'll be home for a couple weeks. <laughs> so what, do you need anything? Do you need anything from us? In Dallas for rehab. Okay. For weeks, so. She has to go to Dallas for rehab for a couple weeks. Okay. So I won't have to worry Thank about Thank you, her. Jeff. We can't really hear her. How's she feeling? Other than that, I'm doing good. I just wanted her to know that I came home today and I'm doing good. She just wanted to know that she came home today and she's doing good. Yay. Uh, is there anything we could do for you, Sherry? Um, okay. Okay. Well, if you need anything, please give us a call. Okay. And uh, I could stop and visit you any day on the way home from work. All right. Bye bye. Thank you. Did you hear anything? Finger couldn't. I'm not sure where my microphone is. I was trying to move the phone around. It's on that camera. Uh, well, it's okay. You translated for us. Yeah. Thanks for doing that. Okay, so basically, it sounds like Sonny's in the hospital. Oh. Yeah. She's going to be held up for a while. Um. So, which is good because Sonny won't need her to look after her for a little, for, for a little while. Michelle. Um, 
Michelle told me Sonny was at the Meadows, right? Yeah. Sherry told Eddie today that Sonny was at the Meadows. Yeah, that's what she just said. So. Oh, I thought you Sonny said the hospital. Yeah. Well, at least at least he's not at home, so she doesn't have to take care of him and or her. Worry. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I know she wants him home, but that's probably yeah, Eddie good. wants to go visit him on Sunday. Eddie wants to. Mm -hmm. that would be great yeah all day i kept thinking about sherry and meaning to call and it was just a busy day well as soon as you said that i said let me give her a call quick right now yeah she just got home right that was great thank you yeah she's home okay. doing physical therapy that's good quick it's incredible twice a day and she has to go to Dallas or something now. For rehab. For rehab. Wow. Yeah. There's two good places right here in town. I'm wondering why she has to go clear to rehab. I mean, Dallas. Oh, I mean, you don't deal with the insurance companies, Aunt Martha. Oh, yeah, true. That's true. Yep, that's right. Isn't you know that where crazy? They send you, know, you, you get your knees operated on, they send you clear to Dallas for therapy. I know. Right? You know what? It's even funnier is one time... Sherry's son, um, Randy and Rick, they both work on crews to build bridges. And they were all the way down to Dubois. They were driving to Dubois every day, which is, what, two and a half hours, three hours, one way. And I was fishing down the river, and I'm, a couple guys came down, and I, I didn't know what they were doing. So I told them, like, you know, come over here and fish by me. I said, I'll show you how to. And they're like, I said, you're not from around here, are you? They're like, No. But we're on a bridge crew fixing a bridge. We're we live in Dubois. I'm like, <laughs> why don't you guys like don't you talk like your 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 managers talk and like I got friends that are driving to Dubois every day and you guys are from Dubois coming up here every day to work. I just started laughing. I couldn't help it. That's wow. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. Okay. Anyway, well, thank you so much for doing that and now let's um jump into our bible study I, I as i was saying i'm my i have this daily study and in the back it has like um a little devotional guide and i've never done the evening one because i always read my devotionals in the morning so i thought i would follow it with you tonight so this is what they suggest for evening prayer. It's not long. Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from God. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. And then they suggest Psalm 134. Did somebody look it up? Mm-hmm. Could you, I do you mind it. reading it? No. Oh, praise the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you who serve at night in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands toward the sanctuary and praise the Lord. May the Lord who made heaven and earth bless you from Jerusalem. Amen. Let's pray. It's a prayer of thanksgiving. Sovereign God, you have been our help during the day, and you promise to be with us at night. Receive this prayer as a sign of our trust in you. Save us from all evil. Keep us from all harm. And guide us in our way. We belong to you, Lord. Protect us by the power of your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Does anybody have any prayer requests? We'll continue to pray for Sherry. Sorry, go ahead. My uncle Glenn had surgery today and it went well. And uh, for his heart, and he should be home tomorrow. Who was that, Jeff? I didn't hear. My uncle Glenn worked Kaiser. Workheiser? Yes. One of Norm's sons? 
-hmm. It is his son, yes. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. having trouble hearing you. Oh, I know why. Because my mother was so loud earlier, I turned the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that should be better. <laughs> No, that's oh feeling well. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's like I can't. How come I can't hear anything? <laughs> okay. So I heard Workheiser. What's his first name? Glenn. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? Nope. I have one. Michelle? For one of my my clients, but I can't think of what her husband's name is now, but her name is Tina Holly, and her husband has Alzheimer's, and she's kind of the only one to take care of him, and it's starting to get pretty bad. Ugh. So his, his sons live out. One lives in um, Florida, and one lives in um, Utah. Oh, boy. That's so hard. You know, she sits down in my chair and she's just like, you know what I mean? On and on and on. And then she turns around and looks at me. I'm so sorry. I go, don't ever apologize. I yeah, said, just she... get it all out when you come. Exactly. Yeah. She just needs to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. Well, she is, thank she you. She just goes therapy, but yeah. That's a, that's a ministry <laughs> to just listen to people. Mm -hmm. And they don't even have to buy a drink. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I have a request. If you would pray for my father-in-law, Bob Wilcox, and mother-in-law, because she's the one caring for him most of the time, Mary Ann. Uh, Bob was doing really well in rehab, and for some reason, decided to try to get out of his chair last night yeah. to get into bed without the nurse, and he fell and broke his hip oh, <gasps> no. and his knee. So, yeah, so, so they did surgery already. He's got a pin in his hip. He's got a pin in his knee. Rehab starts again tomorrow. So it's not a good thing. He's 83. We should probably put Brian in there too, right? Sorry? We should probably put Brian in the prayers then too. Uh, well, yeah, except, you know, honestly, we're, we're, we're a little far away and we know that he's, he's not going to get better. You know, he'll get back hopefully to the point he was at, which wasn't great, but it's just so hard on his mom because she's there trying to care for him all the time. So, I mean, I'm sure, thank, I'm sure Brian would appreciate your prayers. And I think Bob and Marianne need him more, <laughs> but God has plenty. He, he can take care of everyone. So he can pray for everybody. Thank you. I just feel, ba I feel bad for my mother-in-law when she says things like, you know, he was doing so well. I was hoping he would get, get back to where he was a couple years ago. And we're like, that's not going to happen. Like, mm -hmm. that's just not going to happen. So it's really hard for her. But anyway. This is what happens when we get older. Our bodies just can't do what they used to do. It's the normal the progression. Sorry, Naomi. I said, is that the, the problem? It's the <laughs> normal direction that we go. It is just the way it is. Well, that one year older that I am is going to be murder on me. Yeah, it was my mom's <laughs> birthday yesterday. Oh, happy birthday nice. happy birthday thank naomi thank you are you better than ever happy birthday oh. yep 
I'm I'm a year younger. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think no. that our, I think I'll tell our, the truth. She's 82 years old and she's showing it. How old am I? 82. 82. <laughs> My father was 83. My mother's 84. Hmm. Our culture does does not do us any good by no. Those trying golden to years. Us, trying you to make us think that 83 is no different from 63 it's simply not true <laughs> <laughs> it is just not true so but we can age as well as possible right gracefully yes yep. but no skydiving for you naomi no i've never wanted to do that <laughs> how did i know <laughs> No, I'd, I'd like to go up in a hot air balloon. <laughs> no skydiving. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm going to... Do, do we have other prayer requests? Or are we? Good. We're going we're gonna to pray for an excellent 80... You're 82, Naomi? Yes. 82nd year for Naomi. The best 82nd year... That she can Ever. possibly have. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> That's right. And uh, how's Carol doing? How's your mom, Michelle? I was just going to ask. She's doing that. okay. She's doing okay. I assume she's home. She's home. Yeah, she's home now. So yeah, we um, she went to the doctor and he's not really sure. So we got to go to Philadelphia. So I'm hoping to do a vacation and end it in Philadelphia for her doctor's appointment. He's not really sure about what? He doesn't know what's wrong with her. Oh. Hmm. I kind of have an idea. It's her, it's probably her kidneys. Which oh. she's been, it's been leading up to this, so. But well, there's no sense fretting over till we get down there and we see what needs to be done and you know it's just it's yeah. from being on the anti-rejection medicine it starts to really deteriorate your other organs hmm. you know yeah you've been blessed for 20 20 years takes its toll yeah, so and how old is your mom michelle She'll be 76 in a couple weeks. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. Yep. Keep on I going, do. right? The, I think it's really... I didn't tell any yet, but we're going to go to the Ark. Oh, oh, that's great. I'm going to tell him on Friday. <laughs> wonderful to the I think it'll be a good blessing for us to go there yes it will and that's the thing that's to nice. do Put your blessings yeah yes that's the thing no. to what's do? the ark noah's an, ark um is it the noah's ark yeah yeah, mm -hmm. replica. yeah. it's a replica so where is it at kentucky oh that's going to be your vacation because because mm -hmm, uh, yeah. maybe you didn't realize, but Kentucky is not on the way to Philadelphia. <laughs> no. no, it's on the way back. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you just go a different That's true. way. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it's nine hours from here and nine hours from there. I already looked. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, that'll be great. Have a great time. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, let's pray. And after I pray for the ones that we've named, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Lord, we thank you for being with us we thank you for the wonderful folks who are 
here studying the Bible, deepening their faith. We ask that you that you be with the ones who usually join us who aren't able to be with us tonight. Especially we ask that you be with Sherry who has undergone surgery and is normally the person who takes care of so many other people. We ask that she be well cared for and that she has time to recover. We pray that Sunny will be well taken care of and that she will be able to not worry about him so she can focus on her own recovery. We ask that you would be with Glenn Werkheiser as he recovers. Strengthen him, be with his caregivers and with his family. That they know that you are with him and with them. We also ask, Lord, that you be with Tina's husband and with Tina, Michelle's client, that she find ways to care for him and care for herself. And that she's able to rest. We ask that you be with Bob Wilcox and Marianne. Help him in his recovery and help her as she cares for him and adjusts to his situation. Please, Lord, be with Naomi in her 82nd year, that it might be an amazing 82nd year, the best she could possibly have, and be with Carol. Help her to find the medical care that she needs so that their questions are answered and help them to have a great trip to Kentucky. We ask all this in your name and pray this prayer that you taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our forgive trespasses, us. as we, we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into but temptation, but deliver us from evil. But for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the, power, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. May your unfailing love rest upon us, O Lord, even as we hope in you. And now to the whore of Babylon. The what? <laughs> this is a very colorful chapter. I Two thought so. colorful chapters. <laughs> um, so I haven't been reading the faith focus that's at the top of the, the um, leader guide, but it struck me this time that I should read it. It says that as we talk about these two chapters, focus on this, the way, any way that runs against God's way may be tempting and attractive, but it always leads to destruction. God's way leads to life. Anything that goes against God's way leads to death. So, Revelation 17 and 18. The symbolism and imagery of Revelation continues. In a lot of the other chapters, there um, also was a lot of symbolism. And there is often debate about the meaning of some of the symbols, but commentators are pretty firm 
and in agreement that the woman and Babylon are the city of Rome. And that the kings in Revelation 17 are Roman emperors and governors, ending with Nero. So, usually the great whore is thought of as the sinful city of Rome, but the writers of this study kind of expand that and suggest that she can represent, in general, greed, lust, passion, the desire for power and stuff, regardless of the cost. So we are asked to turn to page 59. And if someone or a couple people would read Claim Your Story on page 59, um, there are four paragraphs. The fourth one is very short. But do, do you want to just take turns and everybody read a paragraph? I'll go first. Okay, great. Dave Ramsey, the popular host of a radio show on financial topics, says, we buy things we don't even need with money we don't even have to impress people we don't even know. He is absolutely right. We Americans are attracted to large houses luxury cars, and the latest electronics, which we purchase with jumbo mortgages, auto loans, and ever-increasing credit card debt. Although we think that such material goods will make us happy, we quickly discover that the opposite is true. Luxury items do not provide lasting satisfaction. Debt increases our anxiety. And the people we want to impress remain distant from us. No matter how much money we have, we always believe that we that just a little more will bring us happiness and security. God knows the seductive power of a wealthy world in the ancient world and today, which is why Revelation contains two chapters on the danger of materialism. In a spirit-induced trance, John sees a vision of an attractive woman named Babylon who represents the most harmful aspects of the global economy. Her way is tempting and attractive, but it leads to destruction. God's way is a path that will lead to life. The Dave Ramsey Show is prompted with the tagline, it's about your life and your money. The same could be said about these chapters of Revelation. Thank you. So are we living in a materialistic, lustful society? What yes. do you think? <laughs> yes. 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 Definitely. Yes. What happens in our culture that encourages materialism and the desire for stuff. I think a lot of it is commercialism. Yeah. Even if you don't want it or need it, they, they run commercials that try to convince you that you do want it or you do need it. Or. Mm -hmm. Don't you love the pizza commercials at nine o'clock at night? <laughs> well, they don't affect us because none they of us make, even pizza. though you're not really hungry they make you want to get a pizza <laughs> yeah, we can't. Uh -huh. well, no offense pastor but look at what you told me sunday about pastor's day the um it, pastor appreciation day yes it was created by hallmark <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yes i was looking it up because i thought huh well there's a pastor's appreciation day there must be a congregation appreciation day. I better find out when it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I I guess Hallmark hasn't invented that. So I'm going to create one myself. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that's the point. 
created a commercial business, created it so they could sell more cards and make more money. Yep. There you go. Yep. And convinced everybody that they needed it. Absolutely. <laughs> so does this mean that advertising is sinful? Sometimes. Yes, sometimes. When what comes to mind when you say sometimes? The 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 one the advertising that would be would feel more sinful, more like it's sinful. What pops into my head is the old um, camel cigarette commercials. Mm. Cartoons. They appealed to kids. They don't allow those anymore. But they still do a lot of things to attract kids. There's tons of alcohol commercials. Tons of what? Alcohol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some are misleading. They give you the, you know, the impression that something is so healthy when <laughs> it isn't. You know, it isn't at all. Yeah. So what is our responsibility as Christians? As far as advertising goes, as far as materialism consumerism goes what are what are we supposed to do what do you think god requires of us i think you would rather see our money go to better usage yeah yeah I actually was, as part of my job um, that Reverend Walker hired me to do as a consultant with smaller churches, I went over uh, some statistics with a church that she's been working with that you can get on. She showed me where to find them, how to access the statistics online. And when I was looking at their um, expenses, there was a huge jump in expenses this one year. I said, so do you remember what this was about? Did you have start a new program? I thought maybe they like started a Sunday school or a big mission trip or something like that. They said that they had a pastor who loved candles. And <laughs> they have a closet full of of more candles than they will be able to use in 200 years oh my lord and i thought that was not a good use of their money no nope. yeah it was a little bit overboard i bet they're very nice candles but enough's <laughs> enough right so yeah we have to be responsible we <laughs> Yeah, maybe we maybe they would loan us some. Yeah, <laughs> but we have, we'll take a couple donations. <laughs> I should ask. I didn't even think to ask. <laughs> I didn't even think to ask. <sighs> yeah, so we we need to use our own money wisely, so that we don't get ourselves into trouble, and so we can help other people if they need help, and we need to use the church's money responsibly so in the enter the bible story section the study writers talk about people who have been seduced by power and wealth in what ways do power and wealth seduce us even today why are so few people content with what they have what do you think? It seems like no matter what someone has, they always want more. 
mm-hmm. or someone always has more or someone always has there's too much envy and jealousy i think is what you're looking for right yeah yeah so, i was thinking envy joe keeping up with the joneses they want to do better than the next door neighbor right and why why do we feel that and why um why do we always compare ourselves to the next door neighbor i don't (laughs) (laughs) my husband always said people were like sheep they follow Mm -hmm. and i always said well they don't have to worry about me following (laughs) (laughs) like a new telephone, how they spend two or three nights camped out in front of the store. Are you nuts? <laughs> no. Could never imagine. Nope. Yeah. Gotta have it. It's something new. I have to have it. Mm-mm. Yeah. Because then I'll be happy. Yeah, sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they convince themselves that that will make them happy. Mm-hmm. But really doesn't i'd be happy if all my kids came home to live near me (laughs) not with me just near me (laughs) let's be clear i'm i'm pretty happy in my old clothes because they're comfortable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i actually get in trouble because i keep clothes too long (laughs) (laughs) yeah me too. But but the Bible says not to worry about what you wear. That'll, that'll be my comeback from now on. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Look, at the <laughs> Look at the it's lilies, how beautiful they are. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said it's always a crapshoot when I put some of my clothes in the laundry. I think they're going to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> you'll be wearing sackcloth and ashes real soon so the next question for us to think about does all of this all of this um concern about not chasing after stuff and wealth does this mean that it's impossible to be a committed Christian who loves God and loves their neighbor and also wealthy by worldly standards. Huh? <laughs> are, are you asking if is you it impossible? Be is it impossible for rich people to be true true christians no it's not impossible it's not impossible i don't think so what does it depend what do you think it depends on what's the important thing their charity charity how much they help other people yeah yeah we have a few very wealthy people in our community that do a lot for the community that's not even known Right. Do it. Yep. How about uh, ego? What do you think? What part does ego play in it? So some people who are wealthy start to think they're better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. Can that also present a problem? Absolutely. Yes. One of the one of the um, verses I really kind of struggle with in the, in the Bible was when Jesus made the parable about it's easier for a camel to travel through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into the gates of heaven. And I really do struggle with that one because I, I do know some people that have a lot of money that I think have a, a very good heart. And... Mm-hmm. Yep. What's a pastor's He didn't say that? it's impossible. He didn't say it's impossible. He said it's it's difficult because well why why do you think it would be difficult? It could be difficult. I mean they I, got an ego. 
it's I guess I've never been in that position or thought like that, but it I, I wouldn't think the amount of money that I had changed who I was. And I guess I, I and I and I understand too a lot of it you have to look back and and you you do have to look at it at the time that the Bible was written in Jesus's time. And there was a big division between rich and poor where I don't I don't mm. think people with money really cared about any of the lower class. Mm-hmm. Where in today's society, I really think, you know, as, as much as we like to complain about how bad the world is, I don't think there was ever a time in history where people took care of people that needed things more than they do right now. So you um, you know people who are wealthy and are compassionate and do a lot to help other people do you also know or have you heard of people who are wealthy and only seem to care about making more money and gaining more power yeah and that's the risk right the risk is that the wealth and the power can make you just want more and more and lose your compassion for people. That's the risk. Mm-hmm. I know I've, I, I've heard people who are professionals that I've worked with talk about somebody who couldn't afford something whatever it was and they mocked them how could you not be able to pay for whatever it was and i thought well maybe because they only make ten dollars an hour like their life is not your life they there's and and the people that had more money and a secure job with vacation time and health insurance seemed to have lost touch with the idea that there are a lot of people who don't have that at all. So it can be dangerous. You can forget that not everybody is as fortunate as you are. So that's the danger. So, moving on to Seven Hills and Seven Kings, on page 64, there's a chart. The kings or emperors of Rome So Rome was around for a long time, the Roman Empire. How long? How long from Julius Caesar to Domitian? Let's see if we can do the math. Ninety-seven. What'd you say? 97? 197 years, correct? 197 years? Let's see. So from 101 BC, you go to zero. So that's 101 years. And then you go from zero AD to 96. Yeah, 197. You're correct. 197 years. That's a pretty long time. Do we know any other empires that have lasted that long?
maybe empire isn't the right word, but. That's a long time. Especially if you're being oppressed. How. Okay. So can I read, um, can I read the words from, from my translation for, for uh, Revelation 18? Eight. Revelation 18? Sure. Yeah. Start with chapter 8. The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and go to eternal destruction. Which, and where are you? Who, Jeff, which verse are you on? 18.8. Sorry? 18, 8. Oh, we're talking about chapter 17. Right? No, that's okay. I don't mind. I was just trying to figure out where he was. 18, 15? No, sorry. I'm on 17, 8. Right where we're at in the book. 17, 8. Oh, 17, 8. Okay. Sorry. Because I had a, a, a bit of a question on this one. Okay. And it says... The beast you saw was once alive, but isn't now. And yet he will soon come up out of the bottomless pit and will go to eternal destruction. And the people who belong to this world, whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made, will be amazed at the reappearance of this beast who has died. Mm -hmm. So when I read that, I, I read it and reread it and reread it to see if I, but it almost sounds like before you were born, you were, you were either in the book of life or you weren't. There are several places in the Bible that say that. Yeah. Yes. So, So if that's what you're saying, does that mean that we already knew if we were going to be good or bad before we were born? That is a very good question. <laughs> I personally don't know what to make of that. I mean, I, I don't feel like life is predetermined, but sometimes like I, I question that because I mean, did did Judas was Judas born and God knew when the day he was born he was going to betray it Jesus? I mean, it fulfills all the prophecies. Yeah. So if you look at the Bible as a whole, there are a lot of places that make it sound like everything is planned out. God has a whole plan. Judas was chosen to betray Christ and it had to happen so that Christ would die and then rise from the dead. But then there are other places in the Bible where it sounds like God is convinced to change God's mind, to do something different. And we know that the Bible says that God gave us free will. So we also have the ability to choose. So if, so this is a very deep philosophical question. <laughs> this is, this has caused splits in the church over the years. This is why, you know, Calvin went one way. Calvin said the authority of God is more important and stronger and God is more powerful. If God didn't want something to happen, God would never allow it to happen. And other reformers like Luther said, God is love. God gave us free will. God gave us the ability to choose. God doesn't control us. So what's the answer? Hmm. They didn't know. I don't know. 
you could think that, you know, yeah, I have the ability to choose, but who I am is so strongly determined by who I was when I was born that is it really possible for me to make a different decision? You know what I mean? But yeah, these are huge philosophical debates. And the Bible is not clear. There are some places where it sounds like everything has been determined from day one. Who's going to be a goat? Who's going to be a sheep? Who's going to do the right thing? Who's going to do the wrong thing? It's all laid out. God knows exactly what's going to happen. And then there are other places where it sounds like God has a plan and somebody says, but what God, what about this? And God goes, okay, you're right. I'll do it a different way. (laughs) And if that can happen, then God doesn't have it all planned out. Yeah. So one of the things like when I, when I read something like that and I think about it is, you know, some of us, we all, and we probably all have lost friends in high school or something that mm-hmm. we all said, well, if they w- were allowed to live out their life, maybe at the time that they were taken, they, they didn't, they weren't leading the best of lives, but they had a good heart and they, I think they would have turned out good. And I think. And, and God knows people's hearts. So God, so this is, I think. Well, this, I I guess I have to say, I believe wholeheartedly that when a person, like you said, Jeff, has a good heart and you have seen their goodness, but then they start doing dumb stuff Mm -hmm. and acting, you know, being rebellious, doing this, doing that. God, I, I don't think God pays attention to the dumb stuff. God knows the true person, who they truly are deep down yeah. inside. I mean, and it also. Yes. Yeah, so you know, the Bible writes about if you repent at the end, it's just as good as repenting when you were a child. And yes, all is forgiven. But, mm-hmm. it, but then some people die a, a longer death and some people are taken instantly in a car accident. I mean, is that really what you think in a car accident? Oh my God, I got to repent and, be good by God because I'm about to die in two seconds, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Nobody well, knows. The pearly gates, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nobody knows. Um, I mean, haven't you, haven't we all met, I think we're all old enough to have met people that we've known to know people that we've known for a long time and to watch them make mistakes and to think to ourselves, what are you doing? This is not who you are. Yeah. This is not who you are. What are you doing? And I just imagine that when they die, God says the same thing to them. What were you thinking? This is not who you are. And they go, yeah, I was being a dumbass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Did I say I know, it out loud? I know it was a big can of worms to open, but when I when I read that, I read I, it like five times just to reread it and reread it. But yeah, we could discuss it for ne- the next two weeks and still not have an answer. Well, you you are not alone. The great theologists have all debated it and and like i said there's some places in the bible where it says yeah people's names have been written in the book of life since the beginning of time and in other places it looks like god changes his mind god's god's mind god god's not a he god is a spirit but it looks like god changes god's mind so who he doesn't have white hair what's that he doesn't have white hair god does not have white hair and god does not have man parts <laughs> nope nor women parts <laughs> god is spirit yeah and i yeah i don't know how all that works nobody does 
someday. Yeah, someday. Someday after Armageddon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, let me see. That was a very good question, Jeff. Wish I had an answer. So this says, read Revelation 17, 14. Together they will go to war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will defeat them because he is the Lord of all lords and King of all kings, and his called and chosen and faithful ones will be with him. Okay. This what is the... are we supposed to read. So if you if you go back just to um twelve, the the they that fourteen refers to is the ten horns, which are ten kings. They will receive authority for one hour and make war on the lamb but the lamb will conquer them. So the, the section is about um, the lure of wealth and the lure of power and how culture is always tempting us with pretty things. I get tempted by pretty things too. And then we hear that these 10 kings become kings for one hour. They make war on the lamb and they lose. So what does that say to us about uh, earthly powers versus heavenly powers? Temporary. What's that? temporary yeah exactly very temporary which we know of course hmm. i don't really like this question but i'll throw it out there as christ was envisioned as destroying the military and economic power of rome in the first century, might Christ destroy oppressive military and economic powers today? And explain your answer. <laughs> I'm not going there. So in this dream, the powers fight, G fight the lamb, fight Christ, Christ wins. Does that happen? Could that happen now? That's a very difficult question to answer for me because it's almost like if you put yourself in uh, Broke my leg. the old Hebrew time, they all thought that Jesus was going to come and be a great conqueror also. Mm -hmm. And we all know that that's not what he came down for. He did conquer, but he didn't conquer in the, in the way that, you know, they thought. Yeah. The military way. He yeah. conquered by love. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I, I think somehow, sometimes we think the same thing, like someday God's going to come down and he's really going to show them this time. And, right. And, but that's the God of the Old Testament. The God of the Old Testament did that. He was on their side. He helped them win wars and that. Right. But when you read Revelation, it gives you that, it same, gives you that same feeling. Feeling. Yes. Yeah, you know, exactly. and, and, and I still stick to my guns always. I'm not going to try to predict how or when God's coming down because I don't know. You don't and, know when the bridegroom is coming. Nope. I, We're just I supposed to be God. ready. I only have a, a mere mortal mind, according to the Bible, and I'll never understand. That's right. 
So I choose not to answer on the basis of I'm probably going to be wrong. All right. Assume that you're going you're not going to get it right and don't even attempt it. Sure. Yeah. You're very funny. So can Jesus not as a warrior on a, a horse but as our savior and our guide and our counselor help us to fight oppression and unfair systems unfair treatment of people of course he can uh He's given us all the, the knowledge to do it. All we have to do is act upon his words. His, his whole ministry on earth was all about helping others. and Yeah, grassroots effort, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so Jesus is a conqueror, just not a military conqueror. It's a different kind of conquest. One handshake at a time, one bowl of food at a time, one hug at a time. Love can conquer. So in the fall, the section, the fall of Babylon, which is um chapter 18 revelation 18 the angel announces the complete destruction of babylon which is here is rome would somebody read uh verses two and three in chapter 18 With a mighty voice he shouts, Fallen, fallen Babylon the Great. She has become a home for demons and haunts for every, e e every evil spirit. A haunted, haunted, haunted for every unclean and detestable bird. You want three, two? Yes, please. For the for all the nations have drunk the madness wine of her adultery. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxury. Mm -hmm. good job so when a culture is focused on wealth and power luxury more than anything else Does it tend to lead to destruction? Historically, what what happens usually? Well, through greed, you you always want more, and you you try you you try to acquire more and try to acquire more until you you can't realistically acquire anymore without going out beyond your means and. Yeah. And it all right? falls apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it all falls. Is that Kathy Goringer on the phone? It is. Hello. Ah. Hello. Hello, Kathy. Yes. yes. Hello, Martha. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Kathy. Welcome. Drive safely. Thank you. I will. Okay. Now, where are we? 
in this in this chapter in chapter 18 the kings merchants and um sea seamen like the ship captains are very upset that babylon has fallen so oh oh actually before we talk about that i wanted to um remind you because the uh disciple bible notes reminded us that often in the bible when it says fornication what it's talking about is not actually people having sex but idolatry fornication is used to mean idolatry when people are chasing after something besides god putting wealth for example in this chapter putting wealth and power above god it's sometimes called adult idolatry and it's sometimes called fornication as it is here so they use fornication here because the greed and wealth is um represented by the great whore of babylon by a woman so but it it all is symbolically means um people chasing after wealth and power instead of honoring god god does that make sense yeah yeah, yeah. okay so so babylon is fallen in chapter 18 and verse nine somebody <laughs> want to read verse nine and then somebody else read verse 11 And the kings of the world who committed adultery with her and enjoyed her great luxury will mourn for her as they see the smoke rising from her charred remains. Thank you. And verse 11, somebody? Verse 11, the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys their cargoes anymore. Okay, and then verse, uh, it's like 17 and a half. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor, you got this one. Or you could read all of 17. In, In a single... Hour... Oh, go ahead. In one hour, such great wealth has been brought to ruin each sea sea captain and all who travels by ship the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand up far off read read um 18 to sally when they see the smoke of her burning they will claim was there even a city like this great city? Thank you. Okay, so we have the the city is destroyed and the kings of the earth and the merchants and the uh, shipmasters and seafarers are all very, very upset. Why are they so upset? Because they can't go there and sell their stuff. Yeah, they can't make money anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's all they care about. So <laughs> that's all they cared about. And it's gone. So do, you, do we ever, I mean, we try really hard to be good Christians. I know that that is true of all of you. Do we ever get so caught up in material wealth, in, in stuff, 
that we get really upset when it disappears. Uh, I know earlier in my life that I, I really struggled financially and I know it was a big burden on me and I, I did I didn't think about it a lot about mm -hmm. where was you know what was the next paycheck was it going to cover what I what my expenses were yeah yeah I, I don't and know. then and then if something happens when you're like just getting by if something happens you like you don't have the money for that extra thing mm -hmm. yeah it can be really stressful or if somebody gets sick. Mm -hmm. So how, because everybody f has the potential to face financial difficulties, right? It can, it can happen as, as the Bible says, just like that in an hour, all of a sudden, poof, it's all gone. The house, the car, it's all gone. So how do you think you would react or how have you reacted when something like that has happened? I just kept on chugging along, I guess. Or in the words of Winston Churchill, buggering on. Yeah. Hoping, yeah. Hoping yeah. best and knowing things will get better, I guess. But you say, oh crap, and you have a little setback, and then I can I can tell all of you that when my car was totaled on Christmas Eve, because my <clears throat> beloved son was driving it <laughs> and it was icy, and he slid off the road into a great big tree. I cried. <laughs> I cried. I sat on the couch crying, thinking, this is so stupid. It's just a car and it's totaled. And the insurance is going to give me money to buy another car. <laughs> but I really like that car. <laughs> and I cried. <laughs> and then you can I always get another car. What's that? You could always get another car. You can never get another son. So you should. Exactly. <laughs> That's what my, my father said when I had an accident. Yep. I thanked God for, that he was okay. And I asked for forgiveness <laughs> and I got another car. But in the moment, I was very upset. <laughs> so. I think they need the most. That after that emotion wears off though, you have to get back to reality and and find something else or make other plans. Um, right. Because you know your current plans no longer exist or they've changed and you don't know when, when they will come back. Yep, yep. And we can do that because we, because the stuff is not the most important thing in the world to us right? Doesn't mean we don't like our stuff. <laughs> we like it. But just stuff. <laughs> but we try to keep it in perspective, basically. Yeah. Michelle, you were going to say something, I think. I know I forgot already. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if it comes to you. I was kind of like on the same line. Yeah. Yeah, you know. You kind of brush yourself off and say, all right, mm. what are we going to do now? Keep on going. Yep. Keep on going. Mm -hmm. And reach out to your church community for support. You know, that's part of the role of a congregation to help each other, to care for each other. Okay. Good. Do you think our, oh, 
I don't know if I want to ask this question, but I'm going to ask it. It's in the study book. <laughs> Is our nation and our world in danger of being thrown down the way Babylon and Rome were? Yes. Uh, of, of course, the answer is yes. I mean, we're we've never been in an in an age where, since Christ has been here, that we haven't had the the, the same thought process of <coughs> greed. Um, everything that's written in the Bible two thousand years later still applies today. So, because people haven't changed that much. Right. No, human nature is still human nature. Two thousand years later. Yeah. 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 So we're always in danger. Our culture is always in danger of imploding or exploding or going down the tubes. What's our responsibility in all of that, as Christians? What's the thing we're always supposed to do? Spread the message of Jesus, love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try to be more yeah. like him. Not evil. Yeah. When you see evil, name it. Yes. And try to do something that that pushes against it, you know. 12 minutes. Okay. <coughs> One of the central themes of Revelation 17 and 18 is that the way that runs counter to God's way. So, um, the way, meaning a way of life that is against God's way, is tempting and attractive, shiny, but leads to destruction. Can somebody read the last paragraph of the live the story section, which is on page 68. In the book of Revelation, John discovered that God will bring judgment on powers that gains their wealth through political Lit and economical oppressions. He challenges Christians to resist the lure of materialism and to see that the glitter and glitter of this world is tempting and attractive, but it leads to destruction. Only by focusing on God do we find the way to lead uh, to lead life. Turn the page, Michelle, and read the next paragraph as well, please. Thank you. We express our beliefs every time we open our wallets. When you go to the store and you see an item that you want but you don't really need. Will you pull out your credit card and buy it? Or will you resist the temptation? When your bills for the month, will you include support for the church and charity in your regular expenditure? God is concealed. God is concerned about your spending patterns and wants to be the Lord of both your money and of your life. Thank you. What do you think about those questions? Do we express our beliefs every time we open our wallets? No. Once.
No, not always. They're for necessity. Does the way we spend our money show what we care about? For some yeah. people, yes. That's a very difficult question because realistically, um, Jesus and the apostles lived with no money. They they never had money. They never had anything. They just, they had their faith. And uh, so realistically, every time we buy something, we really, really buying something we don't need. Even if you want to say food, I mean, Jesus said, don't even worry about what you're going to eat tomorrow. God will provide it for you. Mm -hmm. So, which makes it a very difficult question to answer because every time we buy something, we're realistically spending money on something we don't need. Yeah, but Jesus could turn bread, uh, one bread into a thousand bread loaves. True. Yeah, and we're not living to, we're not living 2,000 years ago where we did live off the land. I mean, I, I, I see it at the country clubs all the time. you got to have the fanciest car. And I walk in and I go, no, a car is made to get you from point A to point B. <laughs> and drive. <laughs> oh, well, Kath, what do you know? Or, you know, I don't have fancy labels on all my clothing. <laughs> but but um, I can hit the golf ball, though. Yeah. And it's, but, but, but even um, with that statement 2,000 years ago, People didn't live off the land. There, there was that select few people who owned the land, and they they fed the other people. The farmers were actually the rich people in life because they people didn't live off the land. It was the very rich and elite people that owned land that grew crops to feed the people. And they had slaves to work the land. So, I mean, I, I'm not... I'm not really sold on that idea. It's no different than it is today. If you don't, you, I think people actually have more ability to live off the land now than they did back then, because now you actually, you actually own land. And, and most people do own an acre or two where we live. I mean, not in the city, but. Uh, yes, they, the clarification where we live, those folks in California, uh, in New York city, take my niece living in Brooklyn. She's got her little apartment is so small. She has to go to the corner grocery store almost every day just because she doesn't have refrigeration or or cupboard space to put it in like we do here in the country. Right. And, and that's how the Israelites basically lived. They didn't have preservation. They didn't have a way to grow their food. They They basically had to go get their food every day. So that's right. I mean, so that's cheaper. right. They didn't have refrigeration. That's why they developed salt and, and mm -hmm. everything else. And not everybody was a farmer. Um, take Matthew, for example. He, he had to go out and get his, spend money on his necessities. So is there any uh, space between extremely rich landowner with slaves and wandering disciple with no house, no possessions, except the coat on your back. <coughs> and within that huge spectrum, is it possible to say that it's important to look at how we spend our money and decide consciously what to do with the money that we earn in a way that follows Christ or doesn't.
can't answer that because I don't understand it. I, I think that us as a congregation, like we try to help our families that we deliver our meals to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That way, not that we we do all maybe all year or all the time, but I think that we have some of that some of that in us. Mm -hmm. You made a conscious decision that even though you're not rolling in money, you don't have an endless supply, that you're going to take a portion of it and you're going to help people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Bible doesn't say anywhere that you should... Well, I'm thinking now, maybe one place. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't <laughs> you should you should never say it's not anywhere or it's everywhere because <laughs> you can only find, always find an exception but most of the time in the bible it says to give a portion set aside a portion not you know wake up tomorrow and give away everything except a t-shirt and your underwear and your and a pair of shorts and you know give away the rest it's, it's not what we're asked to do well there's the story where jesus said that that old woman who gave her last two pennies actually gave more than anybody else yeah because that was that was all she had right but she gave of what she could so exactly right made more generous than anybody else yeah it's all relative right yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and don't forget, we're also asking this question to in a Bible study of people that are all going to church and are all giving members of the church. I mean, I think when you're looking at that question, you're you're trying to ask of the broader um, world where where does it stand on a generosity market? Yeah, and, and in, can you imagine a world where everybody tried to be generous? A lot. I I would say. Most people do try to be generous. I really think I Jeff, really says, believe that too. I, Jeff I really says this a lot. <laughs> yeah, I really do so, believe that the world is getting better and more generous as time mm -hmm. goes on. Mm -hmm. um, the problem being uh, some people still exploit that. You know, there's still a lot of charities out there where you think you're giving your money to to a good cause, and you're actually lining the pockets of the people who are running the organization. Yep. Yes. Fraudulent GoFundMe pages. Yeah. Oh yes. Yep. You have to be careful. There are mm -hmm. snakes. Yep. The you other day in the careful. mail. The other day in the mail, I had six letters, and one was five word looking for donations that I, some of them I had never heard of before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at yeah. my salon, I inspired my boss to uh, collect money this year to sponsor families. And what we, when we're done with all that, if we have extra, we're going to give it to the soup kitchen. Oh, she said, great. you inspired me to give back to our community. Yay, Michelle. Yeah. Yes, so yes, yes. It, it does. It does. If you know, and I don't talk about church a lot, but I just talk about helping people a lot. Mm -hmm. So people are listening. Yeah. And I think that we're all happier because we help people. Mm -hmm. It's very, mm -hmm. that is a happiness that lasts. Mm -hmm. And nobody can burn that up or throw it away. It's, you know, it's not something that can be destroyed. So that's the kind of happiness that lasts. The happiness you get from helping other people. Mm -hmm. Of course, we like it when they're grateful. <laughs> but... <laughs> If they're not, we're not supposed to expect gratitude. We're supposed to just do it because it's the right thing to do. Do it for the children is what I always say. It's for the children. It's for the children. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, I think that's a good note to end on. It's 831, according to my computer. So for the children, let's uh, say a prayer. We thank you so much, God, for everything that you give us. We thank you for the energy and the strength to do the work that we have to do from day to day. And we ask that you would always help us to remember the people who have great needs and help us to see ways that we can help that are that that really help that are um worthwhile and honest and needed and please protect us from the snakes because it's very discouraging when we try to do something good and then find out that it wasn't anything good at all so we ask that you give us wisdom and help us to make good choices and be aware of how we spend our time and our money for your glory always amen, amen. have good a great night, everybody good night guys good night, good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Drive safely. Well, I am. Thank you. Will do. <laughs>